Howdy folks, John here. Happy May the 4th. R2 is finally fully finished. And in today's video, we're going to be fitting the last of the parts on him. And then we're going to be taking him out into the real world on his first away mission. Oh, sorry, wrong franchise. And we're going to be testing him out, making sure there's no problems with the drive system, getting him up to full speed, that type of thing. And uh, while he's moving about doing his thing, I'll also address some common questions that have come up during the build series. Let's get right into it. I said at the beginning of this R2 build project that painting is my weakest skill set and the last two and a half, three weeks in the evenings have certainly <laughs> demonstrated that. I managed to get it all done without too many runs. I have to redo that back battery box though that was the very last thing I was painting and in my elation of it almost being completed. Of course, I rushed and screwed it up. So I have to sand that right down again and redo it. Other than that, I think I eked out a modest looking paint job. Good from far, far from good. I'll give it a little more credit than that. But uh, yeah, certainly not my strong suit here. But uh, now we can at least start having some fun and putting it together. Just have to wait for the white to cure probably about another week. So it's going to be a tight squeeze trying to get this finished by May 4th, but we'll see. <laughs> I got to tell you, even with the less than ideal paint job, on these smaller detailed parts. Getting them installed is both immensely rewarding and satisfying. Just, it's been so long since these printed and it's so nice to see them finally being fitted and finishing off R2 here tonight. Eleven o'clock, time to go to bed. The next day. I'd be curious to know in the comments uh, from other R2 builders who have done 3D printed R2s, if you had quite a bit of creaking and squeaking in all the plastic on plastic parts where they flex. I had quite a bit and it's all gone now, but it took a little bit of work to get rid of it. And what I ended up using is this Kent Automotive Dry Lube. And I use this one working on vehicles to get rid of, of squeaks and creaking in plastic trim. And it works great for that. It flashes off quick. It really wicks into all the little nooks and crannies. It's safe on plastic. It uh, doesn't leave fish eye for any further future painting. And seems to be safe on all the paint I used on R2. The only problem with it is it's hard to find. I order mine direct from Kent Automotive up here in Canada, but uh, I'm sure some eBay sellers or maybe Amazon sellers carry it. And I've also, as you saw when we were assembling some stuff, used um, white lightning wax-based lube. Used it on all the pivot points and the wheels, the gears. It doesn't attract dirt or anything. So between these two things, R2 is fairly squeak-free now. 
But uh, yeah, I'd be curious to know what others are using. To fit R2 into our vehicle, I had to take his legs off. And at first I thought this was a pain, but after you do it a couple of times, it's uh, pretty simple and you can do it in about five minutes. And it makes uh, transporting them fairly easy. So here we are out at the airfield, giving him his first test runs. The surface is quite uh, pebbly and bumpy. So it's giving him a good test to see if uh, we can knock any of his fillings out. And he's driving really straight, didn't have to use any trim. So really happy with the way he works. Anyway, to the questions. Uh, first most common one that kept reoccurring is what are the finished costs? How much did it cost to build them? And it's kind of irrelevant because it really depends on where you live, what you purchase. But I just quickly added everything up from the bills I had and just fire up the uh, listing right now. Now keep in mind that, uh, you know, I live in a rural area, so shipping is quite expensive. And over the last year, shipping costs went crazy, as most people know. And I didn't have to buy any uh, radio system or anything, so I had all that and the batteries, as you can see at the bottom of this list. So that would add quite a bit to the final cost as well. And certainly over budget, um, some things were real shocker. I had no idea that spray paint was made from unicorn piss, but uh, yeah, whatever your budget is on an R2, likely double it and you'll be safe. Here he is at full clip, just testing out his full speed. So he does clip along pretty good. I've actually got my uh, throttle control on him uh, assigned to three dual rates, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Right there, it was a high to 100. Here's just the Leah message. His volume is actually very good. When he's out in the open like this, you have to actually crank it up. So it helps having that extra volume. I'm at about 75% volume there. And you can hear him from way far away. That's probably a good uh, 150, 200 feet away there down at the end of the apron. Anyway, is there anything I'd do different with him? Uh, yeah, I'd start a year sooner. As we know, inflation just went crazy over the last year and it likely added 20 to 25% of his finished costs. Um, obviously, getting rear Omni wheels right off the bat, I had to test the uh, roller blade wheels and the roller blade wheels in the front are working great. Uh, on this pebbly surface, they just eat up the bumps. I still wish they were on the rear, but just way too much tire scrub. Uh, other than that, no real surprises. Uh, the gloss blue, I love the look of it, but for a challenged painter like me, uh, it would have been a lot easier going with a flat clear instead of a gloss on that blue because it just shows every little imperfection as we saw from the uh, dome painting video. Okay, another common question. Do you clear the aluminum paint or do you clear the rub and buff? Uh, I didn't. On the paint, if you clear aluminum paint, it'll just look like metallic aluminum car paint. You'll lose the metal look and you certainly can't clear rub and buff. It's a wax, so you can't clear over top of it. And I already went through that in the dome painting video, but it's a question that keeps coming up. How much does he weigh? He's just south of uh, 100 pounds. He comes in around 95 pounds. Uh, 35 of that is the body. 35 are the arms. And the remaining 10 is the dome, the battery, and the front foot. So when the arm, so he's pretty heavy, but you can lift him. And when the arms are off, it's easy to haul him in and out of the car.
Here's another one that came up a few times. Do you wish you had two or more printers or was one enough? At the beginning, I was thinking I would get another printer when I was doing the dome. But once the dome was finished and I started doing all the uh, you know, finishing work on the dome and painting it and then printing all the other parts, I was always behind what the printer was able to spit out. The printer was piling up the parts before I had time to uh, finish them. So no, after the dome was done, one printer was plenty for me. Uh, the only problem with it is if it was doing a big print job and I needed to print out a little part for around the shop, I had to wait. So in that respect, yeah, it would have been nice to have a second printer just to do other jobs that weren't uh, R2 related. As you can see, he's heading out quite a ways on his little journey here. That's one nice thing with uh, radio control is you've got huge range. I'd lose visual range of him long before I lost uh, radio range. And how long will R2 run with the 15.3-hour uh, capacity 6S LiPo battery packs you use? Well, I don't know yet. What I can tell you is when he was out here on his little uh, day trip, I was running them around hard for over an hour and it only used about 20% uh, of the pack capacity. So just normal running like in a normal room, not at full speed and doing these long range trips, I'm sure he'd last at least eight hours. Just in standby mode, he's sipping 400 milliamps max, even with his voice going a little bit. So, you know, if he was just sitting doing nothing, he'd last you know, almost a full day. But uh, super enjoyable project. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Not that I want to, I'm glad it's over. It's been a long seven months and I work pretty steady on it most evenings and at least one full day on most weekends. Uh, you'll see he's way too clean and I'll probably do another video coming up in the winter, uh, you know, doing some weathering on, on him. But, uh, I just want to enjoy his fresh, clean livery for the remainder of this year. So I hope my little R2 D2 build series gave you some ideas and the confidence to pull up your sleeves and build your own R2 if it's something you've always wanted to try like I have. Thanks for watching folks, happy R2 building, and may the 4th be with you.